So my name is Kevin Cayuet. I'm the director of the St. Tammany Parish Mosquito Abatement uh, District. We are an independent taxing district, so we're not technically part of St. Tammany Parish government. Our offices are over in Slidell, but we cover the entire parish for all mosquito control activities as well as uh, vector-borne disease prevention. So I get the benefit or the advantage of talking to you today about something that I bet everybody knows a lot about in this room, which are mosquitoes, right? It's rare that you find a room that anyone can actually say they've never been touched or bitten by a mosquito. Everybody knows mosquitoes, but there's a few things you may not realize about mosquitoes. The first of which is in the state of Louisiana, we have over 65 species of mosquitoes. So each of those species have different hosts they like to bite, different habitats they're coming from, uh, different diseases they may transmit as well. One species of mosquito likes to lay its eggs in heavily organically polluted water. That is the southern house mosquito. And unfortunately for us, that is our primary West Nile vector. So that mosquito has this sewage association and that, that becomes a problem for us. So I've got a couple of videos. If I could see if I, oh, I didn't crash the machine, that's good. So I know your plants aren't quite as large as this, but this was an apartment complex in Mandeville. You could see lots of mosquitoes uh, bouncing around. It's kind of hard to see in this video, but there are a lot of adult mosquitoes being produced in this clarifier unit. Um, and eventually you can see as our inspector is, see there, there we get mosquitoes flying around here. Some of these little dots are actually individual mosquito larvae. So this particular clarifying unit, you see it's relatively still and this one's activated and moving. Um, the short answer is if water is standing st stagnant and has no predators, particularly if it has some sort of sewage impact in input, in less than six days, that water will, ha will be producing adult mosquitoes. So, you know, a big unit like this is pretty obvious. All these little standing puddles, ditches, they're all producing mosquitoes. It's our job to go and treat those. So we need your help, particularly if you're experiencing a problem like this at your facility. You might be able to see on this as well, uh, this is in a ditch. You have lots of mosquito larvae and pupae that are sort of popping. These are some call, sometimes called wrigglers or tumblers, and this is what our inspectors do. They very rudimentary tools here. This is a mosquito dipper, and you can see the larvae and pupae. The little uh, larvae are the elongated, and the pupae are these little comma-shaped things that are bump, bumping around. They go from lar they have four instars of larvae. They go egg, larvae, to pupae, and then they emerge as adults right after that. Uh, and all that happens in the heat of the summer, which is it's all temperature dependent. The hotter it gets, the quicker they develop. So within six days, they're going from egg to adult in South Louisiana. Uh, you may also not be aware that we're in a sort of a moderate uh, West Nile virus outbreak. We have um, found infected mosquito pools. That's these pluses uh, throughout the parish. This was data as of yesterday. So this is our indication of what West Nile virus, what, what the risk is currently. And this is what we use to decide when to send our, our spray trucks and our airplanes that, you, that you, I'm sure you've seen. Also have had five human cases of West Nile virus to date. Uh, so obviously there's, a, there's another public health risk uh, you know, associated with this mosquito. So this is our southern house mosquito. It lays uh, 50 to 200 eggs at one time in a single egg raft uh, in this organically rich water, including water that has human uh, sewage input. Uh, it needs that high nutrient content. It develops a lot more offspring that way. The other thing it does is that low oxygen demand in that water drives out fish and other predators that do a pretty good job of actually consuming mosquito larvae. So it allows these mosquitoes to be produced uh, in prolific numbers. So adult females of this, of this species, um, so only female mosquitoes are biting, but this species in particular prefers birds. About 80% of the time, this species feeds on birds, and that's important because West Nile virus is primarily a bird disease. It cycles through birds. Birds get lots of virus in their bloodstream. A mosquito, this mosquito bites it, uh, and then it, trans it can transmit to another bird, and that's what's called an amplification vector. Occasionally, that mosquito or a different species may bite that bird and then go bite a human, and then that's how they, they're transmitting disease. But the human is essentially a dead-end host, whereas the, the bird is amplifying this. So that's why this, this species is primarily our, our, uh, our most important vector in Louisiana for West Nile virus. So it could be sewage uh, that, are, that is, is, you know, all spectrum of sewage is important to us in, in terms of producing this mosquito. It could be a, a large 
um, a large pond like this one at Lake Ramsey, these oxidation units, if they're not being properly aerated, um, you're going to have mosquito production. This particular dip was taken right around this area where this truck is uh, on this, this oxidation pond. So it could be very large. It could be very small as well. This is our map of individual homeowner septic system, the ditches in the front yard that have this type of a, a effluent pipe coming out into the front, front yard ditch. When we see a scenario like this, uh, again, this is driving down the oxygen in that water, driving out the fish, allowing a nice habitat for this mosquito. So this is our estimate. This is actually our map of all the ditches that we treat once a week in this parish. It's over 410 linear miles worth of ditch. About half of the effort we do, a little bit more than half of the effort we do, is, is designated against this mosquito. And it's mostly because of the sewage associations of this mosquito that we're trying to, trying to manage. So it's a decentralized problem that often also will occur in these uh, septic systems as well. There's a, there's a dipper full of larvae and pupae. In this, this uh, video, you'll see uh, this is a lift station, a whole bunch of mosquitoes being produced out here. So your, your tanks may be underground too, but if there's any part of it that has access that the mosquito could find and fly in to have access to, uh, if it's not actively rolling water uh, and, it's, and it's still and it's not properly treated, it could, it could be producing mosquitoes. So as I mentioned earlier, mosquitoes are going from egg to adult within six days this time of year, incredibly quickly. They breathe atmospheric air through this air siphon. So this is this air siphon right here. They generally hang out at the top of the water, and that air siphon is the reason they can survive really low oxygen content water. So that's, that's how they're surviving these environments. There's a couple of products that are product classes are the larval control uh, mechanisms that we use to try to control these. These would be surface oils, bacterial toxins, and growth regulators, or sort of hormone regulators. The surface oils work to block that air siphon, essentially suffocating mosquitoes. Very effective. You can see a sheen on the water like this. A lot of these oils are, are designed to be uh, a molecular film, essentially, a monomolecular film on the surface of the waters. These bacterial toxins, such as the mosquito dunks you probably have seen at, you might put in your bird bath, you've probably have seen at Home Depot, uh, that is Bacillus thuringiensis israeliensis, or BTI, the BTI dunks. They also have different sort of briquette uh, uh, products. These products are designed to be consumed by the mosquito larvae, and it actually creates a bacterial toxin that ruptures the lining of the gut of those mosquitoes. And finally, these growth regulators, these hormones, these are inhibiting uh, the trans transition from each molted stage, from larval instar to the next, and eventually doesn't allow them to be hatched off as adults. So these are the major product uh, types and modes of actions of the products that we use. And I know a lot of the question is, okay, what impact is this going to have on my discharge quality? That's the primary concern. So we're actually just rolling out a study to look at this. We're going to take each one of these kinds of products and, and then do a pre and post treatment um, assay to see what, what effect it's having on your discharge quality because we certainly don't want to affect any requirements that you're under uh, from DEQ as well. Most of the products that we will use will be something homemade like this, sort of a floating unit that we can put on the top because, again, it's that water surface that where all these mosquito larvae are. Um, it could be a pool dispenser, as, as this is as well. So that's what we're working, for, working towards. Now, what we're doing in our office, we have, uh, have assembled a, a list, a packet, of all the products we use. If you're interested in looking at that, I have that today. Um, but the other side of our, our, our uh, operations, most of our operations, are out there trying to find where the mosquito problem is. So we're out there every week setting traps. Also, our inspectors go out there and they literally stand in the woods and they count the number of mosquitoes as they come to land on them. That's how we know where the problem spots are. So we set traps and we're setting traps alongside a lot of these treatment facilities as well. Once those traps come in high, these are a couple of examples of a trap. This trap would have uh, dry ice in the bucket, which sublimates into CO2, like the air that we exhale. Um, mosquitoes are attracted to it by the CO2 and the light here and they get sucked down into this net. This is a different type of trap. It's called a gravid trap. It's a pan of water. And as they come to lay their eggs on the water, they get sucked up into the net uh, here as well. So you may see these traps out in the parish. We're out there every week, like I said, trapping with these things. 
Uh, if those traps indicate a problem spot in that area, we do in, in person inspections. Uh, so you might get to know your local uh, inspector as well, and, uh, and then we would recommend certain treatment assays too. So that's all I had. The, the take-home message is, again, if they're standing water that doesn't have predators, fish pr predominantly, um, for more than six days, you're probably going to be producing mosquitoes. So if you see mosquito larvae or adult mosquitoes flying out of your systems or or even just around your businesses. If you, if you notice you have a problem, please give us a call. That's what we're here for. Or, or let us know. That's my email address as well. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, the mosquito plane was flying last night. I saw it go back and forth and back and forth. Yes. The GPS grid better. I That's guess. right. What kind of chemical is it putting out? And does it kill flying mosquitoes? What's it trying to kill? That's exactly what it's trying to kill. So mosquitoes, airborne mosquitoes, essentially, the product that it's, it's, uh, the plane puts out is called Dibrome. An organophosphate pesticide. All the products we use are labeled for use by the EPA. Uh, the design of this product, as well as for the trucks, is to put out a specific droplet size, and it's less than 30 microns size, little, little droplets that could only kill something the size of a, of a mosquito, essentially. So it only kills flying insects that are essentially that small. So we have to calibrate all our, all our equipment to do that. Yep, and so it's, it's it flying at 300 feet in the air. How long does it take to kill them when the plane flies over? It, it kills them instantly if they're making contact with those droplets. I didn't feel any mist falling out the sky. You shouldn't feel a mist. I mean, it's, you know, 30 droplet, uh, 30 micron droplet uh, is not enough to feel. So, yeah. Yes. What are That's a good question. So the, her question was about essentially non-target organisms for our, a lot of our products. What are they doing to, uh, to affect other predators that may be eating those mosquitoes? All of those larvicides are designed to have very selective uh, pressure on mosquitoes. Uh, so the consumption of other organisms for the bacterial toxins, for instance, that, that does not have an effect in the studies that the EPA has done, essentially. So like a bat that's eating a thousand mosquitoes Yep, that's right. Okay. They've done the toxicity studies on those, those animals, on humans too, in terms of the human health exposure issue. The amount to cause any uh, damage to the, to the human health system, you'd have to, the, literally how they do those studies is assuming an individual of a certain size and uh, getting skin exposure essentially is standing outside naked, uh, they'd have to be exposed over 100 times per year to get at a level that would have a minimum effect. Let me ask you this. Could y'all spray most of the termites since they fly at night? Well, that we get that question often. The products we use, no, they're not designed for termites at all. And of course, our funding is, is specified on, on mosquitoes, too. Okay. Yeah? You mentioned birds. Would this apply also to doves that come into my yard? Doves in ducks. your yard? Ducks, yes. So uh, across, the birds, uh, across bird species, there's a continuum of how important they are to West Nile virus. Yeah. And so a lot of it uh, is just inherent. And so they'll bring those different species in a lab, infect them with West Nile, see how much virus they can produce, and see whether or not those mosquitoes are attracted to that particular species. So yeah, all kinds of birds are involved in this system. Some are more important than others. In our area, it appears that cardinals and mockingbirds are some of the main drivers of West Nile transmission in our area. And that's because they are moderately competent in the lab but they also selected for by mosquitoes. Mosquitoes tend to prefer biting those birds as well. So please do give us a call if you have any questions or concerns in your, in your local area. Thank you.